In this video I'm going to run through the basics of editing a raw file in Lightroom. Raw files always require some editing to make them look their best. So I'll just run through some of the essential tools and techniques available to do this with in Lightroom. Today I'm going to use this photo of one of our dogs as an example. It's a nicely exposed image, there's nothing really difficult about it and I think it will serve as a good example as to how you can do these basic edits in Lightroom. So let's get started. So in Lightroom you can use the F5 key to reveal the information at your top of your screen. I'm going to leave that turned off for the sake of size. F6 will bring up this film strip down the bottom. A lot of people like to use it, I prefer not to, but the main two I use is bringing up the left hand and the right hand panel. So this is F7 and F8. I'm just going to turn the left hand one off because today we're just concentrating on the right hand panel which is the controls for your develop module tools. So at the top you've got the histogram and then underneath it we're just going to look at the crop a little bit later on. These other tools we'll leave for now and then mostly in this video we're going to look at the sliders in this basic panel. So First off you've got your white balance, in this image my white balance is fine, I'm quite happy with it. If you weren't, if it was looking a little bit blue or a little bit yellow, you can alter it, but I'm going to bring it back to basically where it was. My exposure is also satisfactory, I'm quite happy with that. And so what I normally do is start with the blacks, and the way I like to use my sliders is just to click on the slider and then use my scroll wheel on my mouse to move around with that. You can turn on this little arrow up here in the histogram and it will show you where the clipping occurs. As I dra drag that black slider right across to the left, it's showing me a lot of clipping there. I don't see that, so I'll just bring it back to the point where it's just not showing yet. And then you can do the same with the highlights as well. So you can see here there's some highlight areas that are just clipped a little bit. There's no detail on those so I'll just bring that down just slightly. I'm not really too worried about it. It's very minimal and I'll just turn those off again. And so now that we've got those basic trouble areas, potential trouble areas out of the way, then I'll look at my shadows because his coat's looking a little bit dull looking a little bit flat so I'll just open the shadows up so again clicking on the on the slider and using my mouse wheel to scroll up and so that's bringing some light into those shadows I might bring my blacks down a little bit just to add a little bit more contrast in it then I'll come down to the dehaze which is quite a new tool in Lightroom and I'll just slide that around looking at the background mainly and then it's also taking that shadow back into his coat so instead of using the shadow slider more I'll use the exposure and just bump up the exposure and leave it looking like that because if you take any of the sliders out to their extremes at either side the left or the right you're running the risk of losing image quality then I'll, I'll just click to zoom in and you can see the, the texture in his fur. So I want to look at that texture slider. This is one I use very carefully. If you overdo it, let me show you as an example, it's just going to start looking yeah, pretty fake and pretty horrible. So careful with that. And then the clarity will just add a little bit more contrast. It gives a little bit of pop, a little bit of sharpness there. Then down the bottom here, we've got the vibrance and saturation. Let me just have a look at the vibrance just a little bit, just to, to boost that colour slightly. And then I'm going to come down into the detail. I don't need to sharpen this at all, it's pretty tack sharp. But this is where you would do, well there is some sharpening automatically applied, but this is where you'd add maybe more sharpening. Also, I haven't really got any problem with noise in here because it was a, a fairly bright day but this is where you'd use your luminance and your contrast sliders to reduce the noise and here you can turn on or off the 
control any of the controls on the panel that you've changed. So there's a slight bit of change there, but nothing much. Like I said, there's no real noise to worry about in this image. So I'll zoom back out again, and next we'll take a look at the crop and straighten tool. So clicking on that there, you can play with that. If, you're, if you've got a crooked horizon, you can just come up to the corner and you can see the cursor change to a bent double-headed arrow and do that. But what I'll do here really is just click on the edge just to bring it in a little bit, bring it down. Just don't forget rid of a little bit of that foreground, somewhere like that, and then press enter just to crop it up a little bit tight. And cropping is something that I find that people who are new to editing their photos permit to do, and it can really make a big difference if you can learn to crop your image as well. I try not to overcrop because then you're losing quality, and so cropping I use just to just to tweak the image a little bit more. So once it's cropped and straightened, then I will right click on the image, I'll go to export and export and that'll bring up the export dialog box. So you've got, you can choose where to export the image to, you can have got file naming protocols, I generally leave them the same. And then down here in file settings, you can choose to export it as an original or any of these other types. JPEG is very popular, PSD is the Photoshop file format. Often, if I'm using for archiving, I'll choose a TIFF file because then it's able to be opened by virtually any editing software. With a JPEG, you can choose your quality level and your color space. Usually, I just leave mine for sRGB for internet use. And then down to image sizing, you can choose to resize to fit or leave it at the same size and then there's other options in there as well. These ones if I'm saving it for using it in a video or on the web I'll usually just size the image to suit that and then my resolution. You've got a bunch of other options you can use but we'll look at those in another video. And then once you're done you can press export and that will export that file. And one of the cool things about Lightroom is the non-destructive editing. So you can, you're not actually adjusting the raw file itself. It's like overlaying layers of your edits onto that. So by pressing F7 and then looking at history, you've got all the alterations that we've made. And so there's the original image, which looks a little bit flat and dull. And here is the exported image that's got a little bit more pop to it. So there's lots more to learn about Lightroom, but there's just a quick tutorial covering the basics. And other videos I'm planning to create will look at using presets. We've got a lot of different presets available on photographycourse.net, and these can make your editing workflow really efficient, especially if you're new to Lightroom. Using presets can help you learn the capacity of what you can actually do um, manually as well. And then there's a whole lot more other tools over here. Uh, the tone curve, the color controls, color grading, and lens corrections, there's a whole lot more that you can do there, but we'll leave that for another lesson. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And I hope you can look forward to watching the next video.